London. Absolutely. So how are things going with you? Amazing, amazing, amazing. London is, uh, um, it's been schizophrenic weather, actually. So one day it's beautiful and the next day you feel like you're in the middle of winter, but it's great. It's beautiful. Oh, we're losing the sound. Can you hear me, Marcelo? Can everyone hear uh, your me? Your microphone is off. I I'm can not hear sure you, but I can't. Going I on. can hear you as well. I think, Thank Marcelo, something you. Hello? your setting is not good. Marcelo, look at Hello. you. Hello. I think I'm perfectly fine, and we can hear you per perfectly fine. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay, so, Marcelo, so. I lost you. Yeah, so it was. So should I just? Start? Um, I can hear you perfectly fine, but uh, the video is paused in my screen. Okay, is it is it from me or is it from Marcelo? Yeah, how, I, think, how? I think it's my side. I'm talking about living in the countryside, and yeah, my connection is not great. So um, we, we we can just uh, reboot. Uh, maybe I'll do a quick introduction. You're talking about uh, London, but the uh, uh, last time we met was in London. You very kindly uh, hosted me uh, for dinner and had this wonderful conversation. So thank you so much again for that. Uh, we originally met in the Cannes during the film festival, which uh, didn't happen this year for the first time in decades, right? And um, I, uh, I was just wondering, you have a very, very um, a special life story, like on the background and what you work with. And uh, I guess you can provide us a very fresh insight in terms of wisdom and how you know, you know, that well, journey uh, took you where you are today. Exactly. So I kind of prepared something um, in honor of this because, you know, you gave me room. Um, I started to reflect on my life, right? So just for those of you who don't know me, my name is Siobhan Helmer, and I'm delighted to be here today to be part of this forum, which I think is very cool. A wisdom Accelerator for Youth. I really wish I had that when I was young, right? Um, and uh, as Marcella so kindly said, I have and indicated, I have been very fortunate to have a very interesting and a very full life. And I'm going to explain how and why. And I am, first of all, because I'm the mother of three kids, um, Danielle, who is 33, Michelle, who is 20, no, 30, and Jonathan, who is 23 years old. I'm a business owner. I'm the co-founder of a lifestyle brand called Helmer, which is my last name. And we basically specialize in accessory, um, um, travel bags, handbags, loungewear, which I'm wearing, and um, homeware. So this we started with my two daughters and uh, we are all, we are committed actually to implementing social and ecological conscious practices in our business. So um, we're determined to work with as many craftsmen around the world as possible. And, uh, you know, we are working mostly with women whenever we can. Not because we don't like men, we do, but really because we are a woman-run business. And in my presentation, what I would like to speak about today is actually, and I'd like to take you, first of all, on a journey, and this is my journey, and uh, of dreaming and i'm going to talk about the power of dreaming because i think my life has been actually a big dream <laughs> and i'm talking about you know different forms of dreaming from daydreaming to visualizing to imagining and to even actually dreaming you know when you go to bed at night what do you dream about right but um let me start from the beginning i was born in the island of jamaica in 1962 and which is for the young people, that's at least 40 years before your time. And uh, which when I think about it today, it's half a century ago, which is mind blowing to me because I can't imagine that all that time has sped by, right? So, so can you imagine for me in 1962, around that time, I, I think I, I remember seeing television for the first time. And, you know, when we looked at television, it is not on a, something that it's vaguely, you know, resembles television today, right? And uh, I remember the first time we had a telephone was when we moved to the U.S., which my family migrated to the U.S. The US in 1974. And that's when we actually had a telephone in our house. So really nothing compared. I don't think um, anyone 
under 30 can you know, comprehend this type of situation because it's so different now. Um, so I was an avid reader and uh, started reading from a very early age because that's basically what you had to do, you know, coming at that time. So I was curious about everything. So if you were, if you had this curiosity, you know, you had to read. So I was lost in books for many, many years. And then I remember one of the pivotal moments in my life was when my mom bought encyclo two, vol no, two volumes, no, two series of Encyclopedia Britannica. And I know a lot of you do not know what an encyclopedia is because I don't even know if they, ha if they exist anymore. But let me just give you an idea. It says a collection of books, which are like between 10 to 20 of them in each collection. They're usually beautifully leather bounded books and they contain everything you can think about. Knowledge of, in-depth knowledge of whatever subject you could think about. So if you were thinking, okay, I've never been to Bali, you know, let me, you know, go through it and you would find Bali and they would have pictures and they will tell you everything that they could at the time about Bali, right? And for us, this was a huge investment to buy two sets of these um, books, series of books. So, you know, in all we had about totally about, each of them contained 15 volumes. So we had 30. So we had the two volumes. One was for the younger kids and one was for grown-ups. And this changed my life because finally I had the possibility to actually go through and, uh, you know, go you know, and look, search for whatever I was thinking about. And not only that, I had the possibility to also search for just different things, just to browse through and to learn new things that I did not know existed. You just remember, I'm coming from Jamaica. It was, my world was small. Um, this encyclopedia um, changed my life because suddenly I had access to these things and it got me, I mean, and I was a dreamer already, but this really opened my small world and made it limitless. Now I saw everything. I mean, it was like a light bulb came on in my eyes and I dreamt, you know, and uh, I, I started to imagine places I could visit, things that I could see. You know, I, I, I was, you know, I could dream of countries and cultures and different cuisines and art and architecture, design, fashion, which I love, archaeology, which I love, and just meeting interesting people. So it, it was, it was mind blowing for me at the time. The encyclopedia and dreaming really expanded my small world. I dreamt of traveling the world and I dreamt of visiting the temples of Bali, for example, while wearing a beautiful sarong, right? I dreamt of exploring the Sahara Desert on the back of a camel and I even dreamt of sleeping in a tent. I dreamt of visiting Timbuktu, you know why? Because I love the name Timbuktu, just because. But also when I knew it was the outpost on the Trans-Saharan caravan route, which I dreamt of taking and being on that route, it was even more, you know, serendipity. I dreamt of seeing with my own eyes Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. I, I thought, wow, that must be like the ultimate. I dreamt of going on a safari in Kenya and seeing the incredible animals in their own natural habitat, not just in a zoo. I also dreamt of visiting the pyramids of Egypt and seeing the Sphinx and cruising down the Nile and having a conversation with Cleopatra. I dreamt of wandering the souks of Marrakesh and smelling the spices that have been used hundreds of years ago. I even dreamt of sailing around the Greek islands and swimming in the blue sea. I even dreamt of visiting the floating market in Thailand. Wow, how fascinating. I mean, that, this is so far from my reality. I dreamt of hiking to Machu Picchu and discovering this lost city. I dreamt of traveling on the Orient Express and enjoying the passing scenery. I dreamt of even hiking and skiing down the mountains in the Alps, even though I've never seen snow. I didn't know what it was. And then I dreamt of being a fashion designer in Paris and living in a beautiful apartment in Montmartre, the Bohemian district in Paris. 
And then I dreamt of being a successful businesswoman, working and empowering women. Of course, I could go on and on, as I've never really stopped dreaming, right? At 58 years old, and without having given it much thought until today, I started to reflect on this, and I really realized that I have actually lived most of my dreams. So, which, is, uh, which, is, uh, which was really mind-blowing for me. I've experienced most of the things that I've dreamt of. Some of them I have really determinedly pursued, like my career to be a fashion designer um, and everything else that I did before I became a fashion designer and to become a, um, a businesswoman and have a, a business run by women, for, mostly for women. And so I think that dreaming, which is why I, when I went back to it, I think that dream, everything that I've done began with a dream. And uh, when we look at the most successful figures today, everyone that have spoken of their, every one of them has spoken of their dreams as when they were growing up. I think, you know, you look at El Elon Musk, for example, he has actively pursued his dream to you know, colonize Mars and live on it. Um, this is a dream that he said he's always had. And this has led him to, you know, to create one of the most, I mean, dynamic, successful business that we have today. And you have, for example, um, Steve Jobs, who says each dream you leave behind is a part of your future that will never exist. Bill Gates said, I really had a lot of dreams when I was a child, when I was a kid. And I think a great deal of that grew out of the fact that I had a chance to read a lot, very similar to me. And not to mention Martin Luther King Jr., where he spoke about his dream to, in his famous speech to end racism in the US. So dreaming is to me everything. And I'm not a new age guru to, at all. This is just my journey as of today. I believe that dreaming is the most important thing that we can do, as I've now learned that everything we desire begins with a dream, because it's in this state that you can smell, interact, and bring everything alive. You, you're planting a seed, right? And uh, for things to come. And it's only looking back on my life now that I've come to realize this, as I hadn't realized it before that I've indeed really fulfilled most of my dreams. So what I'm inviting you young people to do is to dream and dream and dream. And more than likely, you will begin to see that your dreams are, will come true. So yeah, so this is the wisdom that I would, my, my journey that I would like to share today. Marcelo. Oh, well, that, that's really great. Um, I, um, I think that maybe uh, I, I can ask uh, Suli uh, yeah. from Singapore because she may have an interest in uh, the fashion design. I know that she is very much into musicals and musicals have a very strong component of uh, being visually enchanting. So Suli, would you have any questions in terms of uh, what Shivan has done, um, you know, um, working with beauty effectively and then bringing um, more of it to uh, people's lives? Uh, I don't really have any questions, but um, it's very inspiring how like you keep on chasing your dreams. So I find that um, great. Thank you so much. So what do you do in Singapore? Uh, well, I'm, a, I'm still a student. So for now, I'm studying. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> what, what do you study? What do you want to do? Um, I want to become a musical theater actress. Um, okay. Yeah. So are you studying singing, dancing, um, acting, classes? What, what does that uh, mean? I'm currently in choir. In a choir? Uh, yeah, my school choir. Oh, okay. So you're in high school, is that it? Uh, um, in Singapore, it's called secondary school, so it's kind of like a mix. It's uh, for the first two and a half years, you're in middle school and equivalent to middle school and like 
the next, uh, the remaining part of the um, time in secondary school, you're in high school. It's okay. not really a high, it's not the, the exact same year, but yeah. I yeah, think it's, it's I mean, similar, it's similar to, yeah, okay, I get that. And um, do you have the opportunity to do acting classes? I remember when I was in um, junior high and high school, I did acting, for example, I did singing. Um, uh, I was on the, I was, you know, on the school newspaper. I, you know, I was writing for that, so. Uh, in my school, you're only allowed to have um, one um, extracurricular um, um, activity. So um, I chose choir and I'm not, uh, I don't have any acting experience. So most of my experience is from choir. <laughs> I'm sure you're imagining and dreaming of all the acting experiences. It's coming through that way, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Nice speaking to you, Sully. Nice any, more, any more questions? Well, I, um, I guess the question uh, I'd have is that um, we're trying to figure out how to integrate curious, proactive teenagers into society outside the current system of uh, superstructure school. You go to university and then you're allowed to start having a life and um, that bothers me like I, I don't want to fight the system because it exists for a reason i just want to make sure that there are options right so we can go back to the old trainee um that uh, learns how to be the shoemaker by you no know, following the cobbler and um, you happen to be in a line of business that uh, makes it really really easy for teenagers uh, to um, just follow what you're doing and try to learn the basic skills and doing that from a distance. So what would be your suggestions when it comes to uh, teenagers who have a passion for fashion and they want to get involved and uh, how can they do so? Yeah, that, 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 that's really easy because um, I remember as a child, I drew. So first of all, if you really have a, a, a passion for fashion, you're, you're probably drawing a lot. You, um, and I was making clothes for all my dolls. So my poor mom, any material that she had left over was used to design, to make things. So the first thing you should do, I mean, you would probably be doing is actually having a strong interest in, in using your hands, your, your you know, craft, you know, developing your crafts actually, which is sewing, drawing, and, you know, and uh, just actively because being a fashion designer and designing is not just about that. It's about beauty in nature and everything around you. So, you, you know, you need to be inspired, which means you're actively cultivating art, studying it, looking at it and um, having an opinion. Uh, what, what you like and what you don't like. And, you know, and I also think now, I, you know, that it's so much easier because everything is accessible by Google and internet, which is what I forgot to say in my little, um, when I was growing up, we didn't have that. So for me to be, you know, when I wanted to be a fashion designer as a young child, and I knew and I was very obvious that that's what I wanted to do, that was discouraged, especially in Jamaica, and uh, at the time, because you know I happened to have been pretty intelligent. So my mom is like, that's not a that's not a career that's a hobby so i was not encouraged to to do that by no means and that's something and i did do other things i became a journalist and i worked on the newspapers and i worked in 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 radio as a radio journalist and loved it loved it it's something that i also enjoyed but this was always my passion so i ended up going back to that and uh, um and it was like, you know, a fish coming back to water. It was the most natural thing for me. So, but I could do that because I already had the experience as a child of honing my skills, which was my passion. So it wasn't, do you know what I mean? So it was easy. So that's, that's what I can say about that. Yeah. 
We already have the uh, the next speaker here, so next uh, waiting. So we we'll have one final question. Um, for instance, if you had um, a thirteen year old from Singapore who's drawing, trying to design her next musical, and she sent you a message saying, uh, "Could you please revise my designs and counsel me in which direction I should move to?" Would you be willing to spend some time as a very busy professional? Uh, helping her out or maybe finding someone who's working for you like a trainee saying help this 13 year old design her musical um, is that something that you think that the people in your position uh, will be willing to do um, as a labor of love right obviously there's no money in absolutely this. I mean anything I can do to help if I am have the possibility to help that person with pleasure yeah there it goes so the, you can't get a bigger hint than that <laughs> <laughs> Just send me a message. Drop me a message. No problem. Yeah, fantastic. Shivan, thank you so much for you know, sharing some wisdom here and uh, you know, to have a chance to catch up soon. And uh, oh, I, I hope Sully will be sending you some drawings. Um, uh, Sully, you don't have to do the drawings yourself. You just find a friend who's... Uh, you know, it's it's so passion. easy. And there's so many great apps too to do your drawing on that, that makes it look much more professional than I had in my time, for example. So really, you just need to, yeah, look around. Yeah, fantastic. So, Shavan, feel free to join us. Um, we have um, uh, Nick's uh, last session um, this morning here. Uh, then we have another one um, uh, four hours later in the afternoon. So if you want to come back, you're most welcome. And then we'll be here um, the last weekend of September. So, so um, thanks again. You know, Thank the- you. With pleasure. This is awesome. Enjoy. I I will come back in. I'm just going to have lunch and then I'll be back.